Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It's another rainy day here in Portland, Oregon. I'm kind of kind of gloomy out, so it's fun to be in here um, doing something colorful and bright to to paint today. So I hope you guys uh, are painting along with me. So I think it'll be fun. And let me see before I get going on my my demo. Um, just a few few things about, that I've been doing around the studio. I've been spending a lot of time digging into some drawing. And this is something that I, I think is super funny. I, 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 I bought a sketchbook and with the intent of just doing a, a lot of different kinds of drawing in it. And um, I remember back in the day when I was in school, in some, some almost 40 years ago now, I had an assignment very first semester to fill a small sketchbook to fill every page right and that was that was kind of like a an extra extra homework assignment and of course that's a super great idea and then I remember when I was I was just a kid you know I was 18 or 19 and I I kind of phoned at home I remember I procrastinated on doing it I thought the 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 bigger projects were more important I didn't I so I didn't really do the sketchbook and you know I wasn't the only one there were a lot of a lot of us that just we didn't keep it up during the semester and so as I bought this sketchbook I thought okay I'm gonna do it now <laughs> a little late 40 years a little bit too late and I wish I had done it before but I'll just show you a couple of the things that I've been doing in here and it's it's amazing because I I had this idea that that I was going to draw everything in my house, every every item. So the, starting with my purse, this is all the stuff in my purse, little little stuff that's laying around, and it's kind of amazing. Then I have tools of the trade. I haven't finished this one, and then ellipses. And of course, it's always good to practice ellipses. Let's see what else have I got in here, and then some other. Uh, yeah, let's see. I've got other things that I'm doing. Oh, curios, just little items sitting around my place. And uh, my bird feeder. Some I tried to do these guys from life hard. That's hard stuff to do, but I did. did. No, and then I'm just playing around, just kind of experimenting, just kind of doodling, essentially. Oh, and then tools. And I... It's kind of cool because I have gotten, even in the short period of time that I've been doing these, I feel like I'm getting even, you know, I'm getting better. I did this guy, the drill, and I felt like some of the proportion was off just a little bit. So then I did it again, kind of quick, and I felt like I got, I got that proportion. And I do think proportion and measuring is one of those things that, that comes with just practice and mileage. Um, so anyway, this is really, um, it's been really fun. It's fun to do really simple, just pencil stuff um, for a change. And so I've been really digging into this, um, spending a lot of time. And then I've been playing around with my new little sketchbook that I got last week. I haven't done much in here yet, but I do have plans for lots of these sort of uh, panoramic views. And then I have an ideas of doing little, kind of almost like little stamps across here and doing maybe different compositions, different views. So I haven't, haven't quite gotten to that. But um, yeah, it's been, been fun. Lots of, lots of drawing this week. So, all right, so um, I need to talk about my new workshop. I'm so excited about it. It's still on sale for one more week. So right now, um, go to the website and check it out. It's watercolor sketching, pain and Monet. And I think it's a really powerful sketchbook uh, workshop. Sketchbook, I've got sketchbooks on the brain. Uh, and let me just show you a few of the things that we do in the workshop. Starting out with, uh, where's the color chart? We made color charts, which I think are really, really important. Um, when we're, particularly if you're using the pans, you see I've have these mixed up. So this is my chart for all of my um, colors in my the, my current pan. So I think it's really great to have this. And then we did some 
mixing of grays, which is another thing that I find is really very useful, and an understanding that I didn't have until um, just a few years ago, honestly, in painting, even though I've been painting for a long time, is getting grays and getting them, uh, really understanding how they come together is really powerful because it really allows us to use the vibrant colors in, in relationship to the grays. And then let's see, that's another. Then we did some little exercises um, on using dropping color, granulation, broken color, glazing. So a little bit of practice, kind of getting warmed up for our studies of Payne and Monet. Now, what's up, Kevin? Well, let's move these over, like right there. Okay, all right, there. great. Okay, then we got into doing these little multiple studies. You guys know that I'm such a huge fan of doing multiples and working in a series. There's so much power for us in doing that. And I also think copying the masters is such a time-honored um, tradition and traditional way of learning. And I'm always looking for those ways to bring the foundations of painting, color, and composition to you guys in a unique way and in, in a way that's fun and easy. And I think that copying the masters, you already have um, the format, you already have the composition, you and the color ideas, and you're copying them with the intent that later on you're going to be able to transfer that to your own work. But this is a way to, to ease into this that I think is so um, relaxing, restful, but also really rich and deep. And so, you know, I think most people are, you know, really familiar with uh, Monet, maybe not so much Edgar Payne, but I think that they're a, a nice fit together because. Uh, Monet being the father of Impressionism, and Payne just being a guy that just a, a painter and art teacher that really brought um, the the foundation of the foundations of composition to us in such a clear and uh, deliberate way that um, it's just kind of a, a, a great combination with those two painters. So we did. These are so fun. They, I think they look beautiful and they're fun to do. Then we did some larger versions of the pain pieces. And um, let's see, what else? What else did we do? Oh, I don't have the Monet's, the other Monet pieces. but They were, um, oh, which one was it? Uh, um, the Grand Canal. The right? Grand Canal, yeah. yeah. So go to the website, and there's lots of details there, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and you'll see, you can um, check out the sales page. I think there's a link in the description of this video, so you can go right to that. So it's um, only on sale for one more week, and then we'll be moving on to some other stuff. But um, so it's a really, really good price. And I do think it's such a perfect workshop for right now, this time of year, to just quiet contemplation, um, watercolor is simple and kind of no fuss, no muss. You can do it at your kitchen table. You can do it in a big studio. And um, I just, I, I'm just loving, loving, loving it. So, so check it out. And oh, and monthly um, pastel painting lessons um, online members get their fifteen dollar discount on that. And you have to be logged in, and you'll you get that automatically at checkout if you get the workshop. So, be sure you're logged in. Okay, so that that's it on that for today. Cool. Um, and, um, Tracy said that she's less than 50% through the content of this workshop and she's already feels like she's gotten her money's worth and your oh. enthusiasm and explanations are fantastic. Oh, oh good. Oh good. Yeah, I just think I think it's a, it's a, it's definitely a winner and a, just a again just kind of a great one for this time of year. Yeah, Marilyn yep. uh, Mar Marilyn said uh, Marilyn H said she just purchased the workshop. Oh good. So. Oh cool. Cool. Yeah, I think you'll like it. Hope you love it. Okay, on to today's scene. Okay, today's is, it's, it's beautiful. It's spectacular, right? It's so, so much going on in it, so much vibrant color. I think I was attracted to it because it's, it's kind of dreary here, and this is so, so much color and shimmering light, warm light um, on those buildings. So I just kind of, and I love the blue sky against those sun-drenched, structures it's really cool um, 
but there's a little bit of uh, perspective in there, but don't get stuck on that. Um, we're watercolor sketching. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Uh, it can it can be a little wonky. It's okay. Um, I but I did want to mention a couple things about the perspective. Uh, one of my students on the monthly um, uh, Facebook group had a question a couple weeks ago about vanishing points. Okay, so let's let's look at this stack of books here. This is a good example. So this my stack of books here. They're all lined up right now. So we can think about the horizon or the eye level. It's all this, no, no matter if, when we're looking at it, it's the same, the, the eye level, the horizon, right? So that's, that's set in our picture plane. But the vanishing point, so now in, right now these books all are sharing a vanishing point. They're all lined up, they're all, they're parallel. Now if we do this and this, they are no longer sharing the same vanishing points. They share the horizon, the eye level, but they don't share the vanishing points any longer. Go back here, and they do. It's the same thing with the buildings in our scene. Most of them kind of share, um, you know, uh, uh, vanishing points, but, you know, in Italy, and Venice in particular, the buildings are little, mm, mm, you know, they're not all on that. They're not all lined up like a city block in New York. They're not like that. They're, you know, there's some that are, you know, a little off. So they don't all share the same vanishing point. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's look at my drawing. I've got my horizon or eye level set right about here. And, and that's cool. That's, uh, and this is an interesting thing because there are people on this bridge and so there's, you know, lot, lots of different things going on there. But um, I, I, I think it's right about here. And so then some, here's a vanishing point here, uh, out here on my next page over here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can they see that? Yeah. And then there's some, you know, this one's, coming here. But I wouldn't get too caught up on it. Don't worry about it too much. So I, I worked on this sketch. It, uh, and I think I feel not good about this sketch. I feel like it's, it's, it's got good bones. It's got good perspective, but it's not 100% accurate, you know, and some of my uh, windows are not all, you know, nicely drawn and but it's okay. I think it's pretty good. I think the bones of it are, are, are good. One of the things that I was keen on when I began the sketch is this shape right here. What, what's happening with this shape of the sky, this negative shape? And once I kind of figured that out, then I could get the scale and I could decide on where the other elements were. I did put my little I put my bounding box first, I made this first, and then I built it from there. So I think it's pretty good. Now, another thing to point out, look at how small my people are. And they, their heads are like little dots. Even the, these people in the boat, even the gondolier, he's not that big. He's obviously bigger than these guys because they, they are vanishing towards the horizon. They're up higher, obviously, because they're on that bridge and he's below them. So that's, you know, that's just kind of it. Um, I feel like um, there's so much going on here color-wise, too. I really um, want to get the, that nice, bright blue sky, the, the buildings. Also, the cool, it's cool cast shadows on the buildings. Really neat with the shutters and all all uh, that's going to be interesting to paint. There's so many neat details, like there's this little flag here, the lights. Those might be fun to get in with some pen at the end. I'm going to see how, how I feel about it at the end. But I think it seems to me that some of that detail would be well um, suited for some pen line. Okay, so that's that's kind of it's the rundown of what I'm going to do.
Um, let's see, I need a little piece of paper towel. And um, I've been playing around with my new brushes. They're really great. The, it's a, um, this is a rosemary sable blend. It's a number 18. I also got a number 20. It's such a nice brush. It holds a lot of water and paint, and it also has a sturdy um, point. This point is really, see how it, it's really nice. Uh, and relatively speaking, this brush, is, I, I feel, because it's a sable blend, you know, relatively speaking, I'm not going to say it was inexpensive. I think it was um, about $46, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so let's just start painting. I'm going to just start painting. So, um, Marla, mm -hmm. a quick question. Um, for the next pastel demo, um, would you be willing to paint a water lily scene? A water lily scene. Maybe jumping off a little Monet there. Uh, I'm not, I, I would be willing to paint that. I'm not going to commit to painting it next time. <laughs> How's that? But I, 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 yeah, I would like to do that. I have some nice pictures of water lilies because I, I went with a friend to uh, a, a water lily garden this summer. So I do have that. Um, so, yeah. Maybe someday. Stay tuned. I, I know. That's terrible of me. It's <laughs> not very... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's... You know what? The thing is, it's not something that I'm super familiar with painting. Um, so what I... It's not that I am opposed to trying stuff during a live stream because I, I I don't mind messing up in front of you guys. It doesn't you know disturb me or anything. But um, yeah, I would just you know. All right. Oh, yeah, I will. Don't worry. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just I just want a little something of those clouds in there even though I want mostly that bright blue sky. I'm going to put my hair up. I think I'm going to put my hair up. Do you need a hair yeah, band? I need a hair band. Sorry, Kevin. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some color in on the face of those buildings. I really have to really clean my brush out because I want, I want a nice... I want it to be nice and bright. Let's see. And I can come. And I want. I want to save the whites for the those that trim on the building. So I don't want to. I thought, oh, I could come right across, but. It'd be nice to get to save the whites that that trim. Thank you. And then this building back here. There's so much. There's so much cool stuff going on. Okay, I'm gonna put this on. Let's see. This has some interesting color in it. There's some almost purple.
and that kind of um, trying to find something for this brick. That's pretty good. Well, it's really raining here. And the, there's these kind of structures under there. I might get that with um, uh, a pen line. There's this kind of What other brands of watercolors have you used, and um, can you just talk about um, your opinions on different brands of watercolor? Um, yeah, um, I like the I like Windsor Newton as well as the Cinerlier that I'm using, um, and there's a lot of good watercolor whole buying. Um, I usually just shop for the the color that I'm looking for more than anything. Um, What is it about the center liaise that you like? Oh, I, I, I bought this because it the I just like the, the set as a whole. I just like what was in it. And you're using your pentallic today? I am, yep. And I, I just get, need to get enough of this going. And then it will start coming together. And again, I'm not I'm not looking to, to have it be perfect. So do you use watercolor um, for sketching or do you also use it for full painting? I don't usually do watercolor for full painting as full paintings. I, I use it primarily for sketching. So you don't consider yourself a watercolorist? I don't. I consider myself a, an artist. <laughs> and yeah, and you're 
One of your favorite tools for sketching is obviously watercolor. Yeah. I don't like to, you know, I don't like to pigeonhole myself. It's not something I, I want to do. I don't want to have any limits on, um, you know, you start saying, oh, you're, you're a pastelist, and um, then, I don't know. It's not how I want to be oriented. Another question. Um, are you just thinking of tonal values when you're laying down the paint right now? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about values and color. Yeah. And what, you know, what's in shadow and what's in light. See, all of, all of this is in shadow. This is all in shadow too. So I, and I could actually do this, come along and, 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 and also the, these, all, this isn't white. It's, it's, it's in shadow. So we want it to reside there. all this trim, we don't want it to be white. Even this up here. Because otherwise the areas that are in the light won't read. Let's see here. come along. Kind of like that. What's the shape of this shadow here on the side? And even this other building back there. Well, that's in shadow. Boat too, but you want to get there's this plant right here are you using violet or gray for the shadow it's violet it's dioxazine purple with some I think I've got some burnt sienna in there. And a quick question, is Kevin your son? The answer is no. No. My official title is Swabby. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin is my, um, I guess, art director, editor, uh, uh, we have a lot of hats. Right? Lots of lots of hats. It's a small business, so a lot you know, everybody's got to like handyman. 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 Everybody's got to pitch in and you know. That's the way it that's the way it goes. But it's worked for me a long time now, right? It's like five years, right? Yeah, well. Yeah, I think so. It's awesome. Getting in. I'm just putting, going ahead and getting some of this water in just so I can see, see what I want to do here. And uh, when you get a second, um, if you could sort of critique this composition. This composition? Yeah, it says, can Marla, can Marla critique this composition? 
the way she explained pain when she has a moment to think and talk? Yeah. Because it's a complicated question. So maybe at the end you could talk about the complicated yeah. I think it's got a good composition. It's, it's, you know, it's it's kind of um, kind of rule of thirds. This little hot spot right here is right right there on a good good spot. Quick question, have you ever used watercolor pencils? Yeah. Oh yeah. So any brands? Mm, you would... I have a couple right now. I haven't played with them late, lately. Um, uh, you know, I was an illustrator and for a good number of years and you know when you're and I and I did all kinds of stuff and I you know, I basically did whatever paid. You know, do I do you do pen and ink? Does it pay? <laughs> yeah, because you know I was you know struggling back then, um, so you kind of did it, did whatever you know was in front of you. Um, so that meant you were you got you got schooled real fast on a lot of different media. Um, so I, I I learned a lot of different I learned to use a lot of different things. And I guess that's one of the reasons now I, why I don't, you know, identify as a, as a watercolorist or a pastelist or because I, you know, I did so many different things. Ah, oh, there's so much color in this. It's it's crazy. Is that do we do we lose a camera? Okay. I'm gonna switch to. I don't like you today. I'm just come in. kind of fun. Let me get the boat in and the dark under the bridge. I'm going to get some of these railings in. I want a little more red in there. What? Roger chimed in with the comparing me to Ed McMahon from the Tonight Show. Why? Because uh, I'm like, you know, the, the uh, 
Oh. The, the, the backup guy, the right-hand man, you know. I see. Who are those people? I know who Ed McMahon is. I do, too. Yeah. I think I know him more from from SNL than when I think Dana Carvey and uh, some other guy used to do a, a gag with him. Oh, they did. Yeah, I think it was Bill Hartman and Dana Carvey. Was, uh, Johnny Cash, Carson, Ed McMahon. It's starting to come together a little bit. I want to get. So if you have one, uh, who is your favorite contemporary watercolor artist? Oh, God. I don't, I know there's some really amazing stuff out there in watercolor. Um, that would be hard. And I can't think. <laughs> and the people, really small. And watercolorists, you know, people that have been doing it um, consistently for a long time, that just so, I, I love the really spontaneous ones, the really, um, and there's some people that do cityscapes, just like, oh man, just so killer. You know, they just put down a stroke and it just like does it, just reads. So, it's such a cool thing. All right, let's get some of those green shutters in. Is right now my scene doesn't have a ton of color in it. Um, uh, but the but the paint the, the the scene does right and so that's because I've been working on the the um, the shadow side primarily. Could this technique be used as a finished work, or is it just for sketching? Oh yeah, it could be. Yeah, definitely. I just um, know that you know I'm going to want to put I'm going to want to put some um, line in here. Just those little plants. There's a little balcony right there. That's the kind of thing that, boy, I think I'm going to need to get with some pen line.
Now I'm gonna get the boat, the gondola. Sitting really low, of course, in the water there. And I, I, I made this, there's a little spot right there that I made that I darkened that I don't want dark. So I'm going to try to, a little bit later, when that, this is dried a little bit more, try to pull that out. in the gondola. There he is. And the people, whenever somebody is wearing red in a scene, you wanna, you wanna get that because that, that helps. Always cool. And do you typically finish your paintings all in one sitting, or do you return to them a day or two later to make a final adjustments, further adjustments? It really depends. I I do like doing things in one sitting. Um, but if, if, if I'm having trouble with something, sometimes it's better just to let it, let it percolate a little bit. Um, if I'm not, you know, quite sure how to, um, go about finishing something, um, for instance, um, sometimes it is better to come back to it with some fresh eyes. Um, but, um, I, I, I do like to get things done. So we haven't gotten the shadow on this part of the building yet. I'd like to get stripes on him just because it's so iconic. So I'm going to do it kind of gingerly. Maybe I'll come back with a pen line that could be good. And then So I want something, something kind of ochre-ish, I think, for the shadow of the this building. Let's see, maybe a teeny bit of. It's also got. I see some green in there too.
See all the neutrals on my palette here? It's kind of interesting because for a scene that feels like it's so sun drenched and has so much light, there's a lot, I've got a lot of neutrals going. Look at those railings over the top of this. And there's a whole like tangle of stuff going on in here. I'll get that in a little bit. I'm trying to look at what, oh, that's more people on the top of the bridge, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to put them in. Right up there, there's there there there's folks up there. The they're at the top of the bridge. I'm not going to put them in. Can't really even tell. So the Pentalic sketchbook, um, is it technically a watercolor sketchbook? You know, I don't know what they call. I don't. I don't know what they consider it. Um, I can look. I I can look at it because I just. This is a brand new one. I just started a new one. Let's look at it. And it doesn't. It doesn't have a tendency to buckle too bad. Well, it. You know, if you put a lot of water on it, anything's going to buckle. That's not. That's not mounted or stretched or. Um, pentelic aqua. So yeah, it is meant for. Yeah, it's watercolor. It says yeah. See, it says watercolor. So yeah. I just I I just like the aspect ratio of it. I like you know, I just I think that it's a nice it's a nice book. I think I'm on my like sixth seventh one. Okay, now I can go ahead and get a little more in intensity of color because now I'm pretty sure of everything. And this um, pentalic is seven inch by 10. Yeah. And uh, 48 pages. Yeah. Aqua Journal. That's nice. It's got a little pocket in the back um, that, that I like. Um, it's got some nice, nice little features. So all kinds of fun details here. There's a little flag right here. It's got these little tassels on it. I don't know if I can really get that. I'd have to probably do that with the 
with the pen line. And just get a little more color on the sides of the buildings here. Something that kind of is suggesting the brick. get some more of those railings in just so it looks a little more finished. all kinds of so just kind of suggesting some of that stuff back there it's really Right in there, it's a lot going on. It's cool. And then there's seen just kind of a sliver of the, the side of the building here, but I like it. So I, I think it looks neat. So I'm going to try to include it right here. Cindy says that the railing in the foreground is a lot more important to the composition than she thought. It's great for the depth. Yeah, it's, yes, it is. because it's, it's also giving scale to the other elements, um, I think. I want to do I think that's it's pretty neat I, I, it I would consider maybe a little bit of gouache in here with these people. And I also think that my pencil line is a little distracting um, in, in the people in the boat. But it's, it's OK. I think it gets, gets the idea pretty much.
And there's, you know, some little details that could be, there's these little kind of railings and garden boxes and such. There's all kinds of little um, the pipes. Adding some things like that can be um, can add authenticity and uh, just kind of texture to a piece as well. I would have liked to have gotten a little more interesting in the water. Let's see if I can get pull out a little bit. Because it's so beautiful. I'm just giving it a little more oomph. That's good. And then one thing I want to do is underneath the, the table here, this idea that this is there's a little bit of a cast shadow. That's a simple thing, but again, that's kind of setting this this scale. I want to get rid of that white. This is one of those you could kind of go on and on with, but um, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm tempted to, to put a little more blue in the sky, and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that I'm saying that because I, I, I um, don't like to say that kind of thing. But sometimes you do have to know when to quit and when to leave it. It's not. Good. Okay, I'm going to leave this one for now. I'm, I am thinking about doing some pen line with it later. And um, there's a couple things that, that I would like to do is right here is the gondola, the, the guy's row, if that's what you, they call those. Good to have it in there and its reflection somehow because it's kind of part of the story. And then the other ones in the boat, um, I think I'd have to get that with the, maybe with some pen, but kind of I think it would could be nicely finished out with, with a little bit of pen line this particular sketch.
but yeah, I like it. So yeah, so make sure you guys go and check out the website and because the sale's only one more week on the um, watercolor sketching color and composition workshop. It's a goodie and uh, yeah, I think that you'll really enjoy it and watercolor sketching, it's to me, it's such a, such a rich practice and can really inform whatever media you're using. And like I use this, I, I use the watercolor sketching to develop the paintings that I have in my show that's opening in a couple, oh, it's in, I think in about a week, um, my show's opening. And I did watercolor sketches of all the paintings before I did them and they're, they're acrylics. So I use it to help me with whatever medium that I'm um, tackling at the moment. So I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan, I'm a big believer in it. And yeah, so we have any questions before we go or should we yeah, um, wrap it up or? Would, will you be adding any pen lines? And I have a question, would you yeah. be adding any gouache as well? You know, I do think there's a little bit of opportunity, especially right in here, to add some gouache. Um, and I brought out the gouache. Um, I will finish this because I think it's a nice addition to my sketchbook for sure. And it's a brand new sketchbook. So um, what I'll do, so this is the front page um, of the sketchbook. And I'll make a little, so I'll do something right here in the center and make a little title for the sketchbook. And sometimes I like to theme my sketchbooks. So this, this one could be architecture or something like that. But, uh, I, you know, oftentimes I have that intent with the sketchbook and then I kind of go off the rails with it. So <laughs> I never want to um, lock myself into any one thing. But um, yeah, I, I think some, now I, the thing about it, when I look at this sketch, I think there's, there's some nice watercolor stuff in here that's, that I appreciate about it. So do I, if I start putting a pen line on that, that's gonna, um, be strong, right? And it might overpower that, the watercolor ishness. That's the that's the the one sort of danger for me, I think. So I have to sort of tread lightly on that. A little bit of gouache will do the same thing. You know, when you start adding opaque color over the watercolor, it takes takes on a different life. So do I leave? I'll have to decide whether I leave this as a you know more purist watercolor or do I take it into that sketching realm. I'm, I think I'm going to live with it for an afternoon and decide what I want to do with it. So we have but, um, we have one more question from mm -hmm. Gerda. And fun fact, Gerda okay. is my common law mother-in-law. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Hi, Gerda. Um, uh, so where is your uh, exhibit? Oh, my exhibit is at Art Elements Gallery in Newburgh, Oregon, and I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I'm not 100% um, sure what day it's opening, but they have all the artwork and all the images and everything, so the opening is on December 4th, so from 2 to 4 p.m. on December 4th, so yeah, love to see you there, Gerda, be, that'd be fun, and anyone else that, that's in the area, that'd be great. All right, I think I think that's it for today. Pretty much, and yeah. we'll be back next week with another watercolor demo because um, it next week is the, it'll be the last day of our our watercolor sketching sale, and then um, we we might be taking a little break for a, a, a week or so. I'm not I'm not positive, but um, we might, um, and but we'll we'll definitely be back with something to share with you and. Hope you're getting in plenty of drawing, sketching, painting time in whatever medium that you're that you're into at the moment. Okay, see you guys.